Hey guys, and welcome back to Ether of HQ. I'm Simon, and today, me and fellow hubby Matt are teaming up to bring you guys a lore theme deck. That's right, more casual deck text that's more story and flavor driven. If you're a Vorthos like me, then you want to explore the lore in all of its facets. It's a bonus when it collectively cohes into a deck. Now, Matt isn't a Vorthos like me, so it's more of a skill building challenge as well as a lore lesson for him. But, together we worked on a theme that I believe that you guys will really like and maybe try at your own kitchen table sometime. This lore deck features everyone's favorite villain slash anti-hero slash no, really a villain, Tezzeret, taking us from his roots on Esper to his Ethereum obsession and eventually to his robotic controls on Kaladash. Think of it as a deck in the life of Tezzeret, a past and history you can play. Now let's shoot on over to Matt for our first lore deck, one I'm sure you'll find, Despacito. What? Nah, I have no idea what that means, I just heard it on one of the young people's channels. I'm trying to connect here. Thank you Simon for that great intro there. This is Matt from Total MTG. Let's take a look at my deck. So guys, let's have a look at this deck that I build. It is Esper Tezzeret. The Alara Shard of Esper was definitely something that appealed to me. Tezzeret the Schema was my Planeswalker of choice for my first lore themed deck. It costs two, a blue and a black. We do run it as a four of. Comes in with five loyalty. It has a creator colorless artifact token name Ethereum Cell. Which sacrifices artifact and you get to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. He also has a minus two, which is target creature gets plus X, minus X to the number of artifacts we control. And also the emblem is, at the beginning of your combat on your turn, a target artifact becomes a 5-5 five, five artifact creature. That is a minus seven. So I was just wondering, Simon, how does Ethereum, how does that sort of coincide with Tezzeret? Well, as you said, Tezzeret is a native of Esper, a shard of Alara with an outstanding fascination with Ethereum, an alloy magically infused with Ether. This mineral is so highly regarded that many on Esper have been systematically binding every living thing on the shard with the metal, believing Ethereum enhances biological life to a more perfect level. This is why Tezzeret has this wonky metal claw thing. It's an ethereum replacement meant to heighten his physical capabilities. Something all Esperites stride for. Not only is ethereum literally a part of his being, it also holds a big place in this character's development. As a young man, he wanted nothing more in life than to join the Seekers, a group of learned men on a mission to discover the secrets of ethereum so that they could by chance make their own. See, on Esper, the keys to making Ethereum have long since been lost, since the time it was first created generations ago by a Sphinx planeswalker named Crucius. The people learned through his teachings and the Sphinx Sharum that Ethereum is comprised of two minerals, Sangriite and Karmut, both of which were lost to the Shard. Supposedly, the Seekers possessed the Codex Ethereum, which pinpointed the location of these obviously rare minerals. Wanting to make himself more Ethereum and grow in power, Tezzeret tried to join in order to uncover this secret. In failing his initial test to join the Seekers, Tezzeret would become vindicated in discovering that no such Codex ever even existed, and that the Seekers themselves were a fraud. This, however, didn't stop the guards from beating him within an inch of his life, which was the event that triggered his Planeswalker Spark for the first time in his life. While traveling to the neighboring shards prior to the conflux, Tezzeret would meet the Dragon Planeswalker Nicol Bolas and discover the truth behind Ethereum. It turns out, new Ethereum could never be made because its other ingredients weren't native to Esper. The Sphinx Planeswalker traveled to Jun to find these missing components to the coveted metal, Sangrenite being the petrified blood of dragons and Karmat being, well, another mysterious rock I guess. So, as you can see, Ethereum shapes everything on Esper, and not just the physical body of Tezzeret. If it wasn't for his pursuit in this knowledge, his Planeswalker Spark may not have ignited at that time and sent him to the current plane of Nicol Bolas, setting him down the path we find him on today. So going back to the theme of my deck, I like the idea that Tezzeret liked shiny artifacts. The Dalkans were there, Wizards were there, and Sphinxes were there all on this shard as well. I like the fact of maybe, maybe we could cheat something in. 
Tezzeret is, you know, he's a baddie goody, as we were saying there. A baddie that everyone loves to hate. So we start off with the creatures. We will look at this. Ethereum Sculptor. This is a 1-2. It costs 1 and a blue. Artifact spells we cast cost 1 less to cast. Now, all of our deck is basically artifacts. So this will certainly help us cast those creatures just that little bit cheaper. The next creature we have is a 3 of. It's Master of Ethereum. 2 and a blue. This artifact for Dalkan Wizard. Its power and toughness are equal to the number of artifacts we control. Now with Tezzeret hopefully spitting out those Ethereum cells, this will be huge and could be our game winner. Other artifact creatures you control also get plus one one. The next creature is another artifact creature, of course. It's a human artificer. It is a master transmuter. Now this is the card that intrigued me the most when building this because I wanted to cheat some nice shiny artifacts into play. This hey is a 1-2 for 3 and a blue, so it does cost 4, but has for 1 blue. You tap it, return an artifact you control to its owner's hand. You may put an artifact card from your hand into play. Now we're going to be making artifacts with Tezzeret, and we'll have a few cheap ones on the battlefield as well. So what do we want to cheat into play? What does Tezzeret want to cheat into play? We start off with Ethersworn Adjudicator. All these are one-offs, I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen. This is a four and a blue. It is flying. It is, it's got the Esper theme of it. You can see its abilities there. One black and white tap to destroy target creature enchantment. Then we pay the two and a blue to untap it as well. And maybe we get to do it all again. The next one of is Shroom the Hegemon. Three white, black, blue. This Sphinx, when Herogum comes into play, you may return an artifact for card from your graveyard to play. So maybe they want to try and get rid of our transmuters. We will get them back. Maybe some other than the big artifacts that get killed. We've got a bit of recursion here. This is what I like. Worm Coil Engine is just absolute value tower for artifacts. It's a 6-6 six, six death touch life. Let me run on one of these. When it dies, well, sorry, when it goes into a graveyard, you get to put a colorless worm token with death touch and another one with lifelink onto the battlefield. One of my favorite commanders is Memnark, and Memnark comes in as a one-off. This is a kitchen table brew. This is what this is here for. This is, to me, like the theme of stealing artifacts. Tezzeret loves things shiny. There's nothing more shiny than Memnark. Target permanent becomes an artifact. We will turn our field into artifacts. And then, hopefully, we will gain control of a target artifact by paying three and a blue. The last creature we have is just another one of, which is a big Sphinx again from the Shards of Lara. It is Sphinx of the Stillwind. It has flying, first strike, vigilance, lifelink, protection from red and from green, and it's 6-6. Six, six. And I love the old feature text on this. No one has properly answered her favourite riddle. Why should I spare your life? We run a couple of artifacts. Ethereum Astrolabe. I'm not sorry if I'm pronouncing that right. Two and a blue. It's got more ether in it. I love that being part of the deck. And it also is, has flash where we can sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. So maybe we can sacrifice the artifacts that we're making with Tezzeret. Pay one black. It's a bit of card draw. That could really help us in game early or late. Removal we have. We have four Path to Exiles. We also have four Esper Charm. We could not have a Shards of Alara Esper deck without Esper Charm. Destroy target enchantment, draw two cards, or target player discards two cards. We have four of them. Also, Metallic Rebuke, very on theme with the deck. Lovely art on that. Look at that artifact there. Tezzeret, too little, too late. The machine is in motion. This is what we want to do with our deck. Put the deck in motion, make artifacts bigger and cheap as we can. This is a counter-target spell, unless it's controller pays three. And also has Improvise, so it could be a one-mana mana leak for us. Very, very good. Go on to a bit of card draw now. First for knowledge. Draw three cards and discard two cards. Unless you discard an artifact, we might be able to do that and get it back with a transmuter. So don't be afraid to maybe ditch something that's really good. You can always get it back with transmuter. The land base is pretty simple. We have some Academy Ruins in there. Great for this type of deck to put artifacts back from the graveyard on top of our library. There's a Buried Rune in there. There is some fetch lands in polluted deltas and flooded strands, and your basic swamps and islands, and also we also have a plains. 
Watery Graves is a 3 of, as well as a 3 of for Hallowed Fountain. So we know now why Tezzeret loves Ethereum. It is clearly part of his body. But what happened to Tezzeret Cyber? What happened to him? Why did he? What was the planeswalker that keeps bringing him back? Well, Matt, Tezzeret had a really, really rough life. I mean, besides Squee, I don't know any other Magic the Gathering character who's endured more punishment only to be returned for more. To say he lacks determination would just straight up be untrue. But making deals of power with someone like Nicol Bolas, as I'm sure you know, is not a great idea. Especially if you don't deliver on your promises of loyalty. And Tezzeret is a tad bit on the selfish side. Since first teaming up with Nicol Bolas, Tezzeret has, from the beginning, plotted to destroy the dragon in order to free himself of his influence. Tezzeret literally stole the interplanar organization known as the Infinite Consortium away from Bolas, hoping to use its connections and ancient artifacts to defeat his master. It didn't work. The dragon easily overcame the weakened Tezzeret after he got manhandled by Jace, quite literally shattering his body and mind, only to reconstruct his pet at a later date. Although Tezzeret was revived and reformed, that didn't stop his rebellious side, even after Bolas tattooed his horns into the planeswalker's forehead. While working for Bolas, Tezzeret will only ever truly serve himself. Although Nicol Bolas is never far away, always available to whip his servant back into line from time to time. So now we go to the sideboard, guys. The sideboard is made up of a mixture of different things. We have Vidalcan Outlander. I like this because it has protection from red. So it will help us against those bolty sort of decks. Only cost a white and a blue for a 2-2. Very nice. We're going to have three of them. Our next creature in the sideboard is Aether Sworn Shield Mage. The one blue and white 2-2 that has Flash, Vidalcan again. What does Vidalcan have to do with Tezzeret Sarban? Please let me know more of this lore story. Good question, Matt. Well, the Vidalcan are a race of creature type that seem to pop up everywhere Tezzeret seems to find himself. On Esper, the Vidalcan are the most regarded mortal race due to their intelligence and fervent belief in the enhancing power of Ethereum. While working the Consortium and recruiting Jace Bellerin on Ravnica, the Dolkins once again popped up throughout the city plain. He'd run into the race again on the plain of Mirrodin, which was transitioning into New Phyrexia at the time. In fact, a Vidalcan agent of Bolas was the one who injected him with a special serum making him immune to the perfection process of the Phyrexians there, allowing him to observe and interfere with their rise on New Phyrexia without worry. And finally, he'd see the race again on Kaladash, working closely with the bureaucratic Vidalcan planeswalker Davin Bane, in order to seize control of the city, again on orders of Nicol Bolas. We also run a couple of Damnation in case we want to just reset the board and destroy all the creatures, and as a three of as well, is Punishing Ignorance. I just like this card, it's a bit different, I've never used it before, so I wanted to give it a try. It's the Esper colour as white, double, blue and black. Not the easiest card to cast, but it seems fun. Counter target spell. Its controller loses three life and gives us three life. So the last card on our sideboard is Tezzeret's Touch, where we can enchant one of our lovely artifacts and turn it into a great 5-5 five, five beta. We're having that as a four of. That is the last cards in our Esper Tezzeret deck. So guys, that was my Esper Tezzeret deck. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. Any other planes or shards you'd like me to visit next, let me know in the comments. I will do my best to maybe try and brew around them as well. Everyone take care. I'll see you on the next video.